In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Very welcome to, to Mass this morning, those here in church and those who are joining us via the, via the live stream, those in our homes. The Mass this morning is being offered for the repose of the soul of Bob Dunn. It's always important to remember where the balance lies, that it is God's love for us which is the overriding reality as we struggle at times to respond, struggle at times even to be aware that that love is there. That's simply a part of our journey of growing. But it is God's loving kindness for us that is the most important reality. We have some children, I think. They're going to go to look at the scriptures in their own way. Good morning. Are you feeling strong? Right. You hold that height. Okay. That's right, Theo. Hold his hand and show him where he's going. He knows where he's going. Right? So that we might be aware, then, of that unconditional love that God has for each one of us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us one day together to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Speak to the whole community of the sons of Israel and say to them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You must not bear hatred for your brother in your heart. You must openly tell him, your neighbor, of his offense. This way you will not take a sin upon yourself. You must not exact vengeance, nor must you bear a grudge against the children of your people. You must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is compassion and love. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless God's holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord. And never forget all God's blessings. The Lord is compassion and love. It is God who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave who crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. God does not treat us according to our sins nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is compassion and love. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. As parents have compassion on their children, The Lord has pity on those who are God-fearing. The Lord is compassion and love. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Didn't you realize that you were God's temple and that the Spirit of God was living among you? If anybody should destroy the temple of God, God will destroy him, because the temple of God is sacred, and you are that temple. Make no mistake about it. If any one of you thinks of himself as wise in the ordinary sense of the word, then he must learn to be a fool, before he really can be wise. Why? Because the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. As scripture says, the Lord knows wise men's thoughts. He knows how useless they are. Or again, God is not convinced by the arguments of the wise. So there is nothing to boast about in anything human. Paul, Apollos, Cephas, the world, life and death, the present and the future, are all your servants. But you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have learnt how it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I say this to you offer the wicked person no resistance. On the contrary, if anyone hits you on the right cheek, Offer him the other as well. If someone takes you to law and would have your tunic, let them have your cloak as well. And if anyone orders you to go one mile, go two miles with them. Give to anyone who asks. And if anyone wants to borrow, do not turn away. You have learned how it was said. You must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say this to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In this way, you will be children of your Father in heaven, for he causes his Son to rise on bad as well as good, and his rain to fall on honest and dishonest alike. For if you love those who love you, what credit can you claim? Even the tax collectors do as much, do they not? And if you save your greetings for your family, are you doing anything exceptional? Even the pagans do as much, do they not? You must therefore be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. There are two very, very serious injunctions that we have there from the Lord Jesus and from the Jewish scriptures. To be perfect as God is perfect and to be holy. I suspect if I ask for a show of hands about who here considers themselves to be either perfect or holy. I won't embarrass you this morning. But I don't expect I would get much of a reaction. If I asked you to give a show of hands if you thought that other people here in the church, apart from yourselves, might be perfect or holy, I think you might be more likely to say, yeah, probably, I think that she's quite holy or, or he's quite holy. Not sure on the perfection line, but holiness probably we might be willing to, yeah, might be willing to concede that other people might fit that particular bill. I think our difficulty is 
that we misunderstand what holiness or perfection are about. And I suspect that we think that they're quite static things. I wonder what you thought when we, we prayed that opening prayer, which you, with, you, with great enthusiasm, said amen to at the start of the Mass. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we might carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. I suspect that for quite a number that reference to spiritual things translated very quickly to religious things. And it doesn't. It does not at all translate automatically to religious things. Spiritual things are those things which give us life and give life to those around us. Because the Spirit gives life. The Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, is the life giver. All around, I'm sure you've noticed, I hope you've noticed, that we've got snowdrops around and about. Have a look when you go out from church. Snowdrops are there. We have a, a magnolia tree in the garden of the parish house. When spring was still a long way off, the tree was putting out the buds, which will become the flowers. We have crocuses pushing through in the garden. And the daffodils are now beginning to find their way through. When I was on holiday, I went for a walk at the Arboretum. And already there, the little narcissi were already in flower. Because the Spirit is at work. The Spirit is at work in all of creation. Wherever life comes, God's Holy Spirit is at work. Those who've got children, it wasn't just down to the two of you. Yeah. God's in there. God's involved. God's giving life. So when we're asked to ponder spiritual things, it's not, well, I'm going to think about rosary beads today and statues tomorrow and what wonderful vestments Father has got the day after and aren't the Stations of the Cross wonderful the day after that and Our Lady's statue the day after that. It's not about that at all. They're there to help us. They're there to help us on our journey. They speak their own story of God's love. But we're asked to ponder that which gives life. And it's because we do that that we're able to live in a way which fulfills God's command. Don't have you noticed in the psalm the response that we sang? The Lord is compassion and love. Not the Lord is compassionate and loving, but the Lord is, is compassion and love. You can be the most bad-tempered so-and-so in the world and still manage with the people you like to be compassionate and loving and be the opposite with anybody else. But that's not how it is with God. Because it's God's nature. God can do no other. God cannot be anything but compassion and love. And that's where our gospel story comes in. Jesus is correcting the scriptures. He's correcting what he himself has learned. You've heard how it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That sounds to us quite vengeful. In its day, it was a statute limiting, limiting 
how much vengeance you could take. If someone docked you on the mouth and knocked a tooth out, you couldn't get any more than one tooth back in return. The lex talionis is known. It limits. If someone steals your donkey, you can't go and take all of his donkeys. You can only get the one donkey back. But you've heard how that was said. I say to you, live differently. Love your neighbor. Love and pray for your enemies. And in that way, you'll become children of your loving Father in heaven, who asks that we live out of a different set of values. The wisdom of our world is not wisdom. It's not wisdom. It's very hard to find any signs of what you might call wisdom in the way in which the powerful exercise their power in our world. Where we have our values set, where we place our resources, what do we value? We value what we pay for. What are we willing to pay for? Not what I suspect most of us would actually want us to be paying for. That wisdom is not wisdom. Economics does not lead us into a place where there is life. They're not life-giving. In fact, they're doing exactly the opposite at the moment. The technicians in the hospital mortuary tell us that they are far busier now than they were at the height of the COVID deaths. Busier now than they were then. And we don't need to look far for the causes of that. You go into the hospital and you see the long, long, long queues just waiting to be seen in any. Queues that were four or five stretches long are now five, nearly ten times as long. Each one with an ambulance crew there, unable to go and respond to other calls because they have to stay with their patients because there are no beds. So where we put our resources tells us what we consider to be important. And the care of the sick, the care of the elderly, is increasingly unimportant in this country of ours. So when we're pondering spiritual things, let's have that lens in our minds that what gives life? What is life giving for us? and for our community, and for our country, and for our world. So that we can live truly as God's beloved daughters, God's beloved sons, God's beloved children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We profess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and he secretly rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of sin. <coughs> Action of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. You know it is when you're between sneezes. Okay. Let's take a moment for prayer. We pray for the whole church, for all those who seek to follow in the way the Lord Jesus leads us in. Lord, in your mercy, for Pope Francis and for Bishop Terry, Lord, in your mercy, for those in civil authority, we pray especially for the decision makers 
in those places, those many, many places in our world where war holds sway. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who work in our life-giving services, in health care, fire service, police, social services, education. We pray that they may be properly resourced. Lord, in your mercy, for those in our city's hospitals, those who are sick in body, in mind, and in spirit, all those who are alongside them. Lord, in your mercy. And for those who have died. For those who grieve and those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. And for the prayers that we carry in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, loving God, hear us as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Theodore's first. The rest of the world behind. <laughs> Coming in, he's at the back. <laughs> It will be worth waiting for, I promise you. Just, just bear yourselves in patience. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. So you put that on the altar for us. And the Word of God goes on there. Thank you. Okay. Are you going to explain this for us? We've been learning about we will always love our enemies. Is that an easy thing to do? No. So do we need help? Yes. Where do we get the help? I don't know. God. 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 You see, I told you it was worth waiting for. <laughs> Thanks. We'll pop this down. Thank you.
Sisters, brothers, let's pray together that this, your sacrifice and mine, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honour of your Majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Saviour. We celebrate his death in love. We confess his resurrection with living faith. And we await his coming in glory with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down upon them like the dewfall your spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that sharing in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, 
Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all who serve the Gospel. Remember your servant, our brother Bob, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. And remember all our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and who reign, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share together a sign of Christ's peace. Can you take you into those in the front row? Yeah. It's very gloopy. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we think away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we think away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins and the sins of all the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us in these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Let's sit down just for a moment. Just to thank you for your incredible generosity last week, the total of the money that came in through the, the collections and through the card reader was just over £1,300 for the Syria-Turkey appeal, which is a, given that that was such short notice, is an amazing response. I know that many uh, will already have given online to the various other charities that are, or to CAFOD itself, uh, to gift aid what their contribution was. So thank you very much for that. There is a retiring collection today. Um, recalls that it comes increasingly closer to my own heart, uh, that of the retired and infirm priests of the diocese. So, so that's there. Um, you know how it is when you stop, stop earning. And um, the synodal thought, I thought, I thought, was not a bad um, thing to ponder. Um, we tend to think of the Catholic Church as being just kind of Rome and the West, but there are many parts of the Catholic Church um, which aren't focused on, on Rome, but whose bishops are in communion with the Bishop of, of Rome. One of those um, is the Syriac Catholic Church, and they've just had their assembly, um, their synodal assembly in Lebanon. And this is the Bishop of, of Damascus in Syria, so God help that people at the moment. Um, but he's just stressing to his brother bishops the importance to hear the needs of the faithful they serve. And that goes for the, for the priests as well. Because he said, we cannot give orders and make decrees without knowing about what their needs are. Seems like common sense, doesn't it? Thank you for coming to Mass, if you stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.